Ah, welcome everybody. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so let's all drop in together. Hmm. You know, let's let's do a little movement first. Um so depending on what your body is telling you today. Above all, listen to your own body, your own intuition for everything. Um, and there's an invitation to stand up if you want to. Um, if today you'd rather move sitting down or even just be still or lie down, if that's what your body is needing today, then I would welcome that. Let's just start by shaking out the hands. And again, if your body says, it wants to do something else, please listen to your body above anything I say, always. Just gonna find a new way to put my computer here. Here we go, okay. So maybe doing some shoulder rolls, either one at a time or together. Tuning into your own body, going at the pace that you want to go. Switching directions. And then maybe doing a little bit of gentle neck stretching, allowing the head to tip to one side gently. Again, if you have neck issues, listen to your body. And rolling forward gently to the other side and allowing the neck to stretch on that side. And if it feels good, you could even close your eyes to really tune into your muscles, your sensations in your body. And then just doing some neck rolling. I don't like to roll my neck backwards. That doesn't feel good on my body, but you tune into what you need today. Hmm. And just checking with your legs and seeing that your knees are bent, you know, instead of lock and knees are bent, body is upright but loose and beginning to connect with the feet. And we're just gonna shift back and forth from one foot to the next. So just gently one foot, and then the other. And as you can see, I'm not lifting up my feet. I'm, I'm keeping contact. And so you're just shifting your weight back and forth. Tuning into the bottoms of your feet. And this is gonna be a nice practice in a moment. I'm gonna share some information with you uh, about an event that's coming up this weekend um, that involves movement and meditation and music. And what I want you to do, because this is good practice for just daily life, is see if you can keep one eye inward on your feet or some other body part and you know, move your body how it wants to be moved. If you want the direction, then just continuing to slowly shift from one foot to the next, swaying back and forth. And if your body is wanting to do something else, you know, trusting that and moving the body how it wants to be moved. And in the meantime, I'm going to share this information with you about this meditation movement opportunity. So I'm gonna grab my phone because uh, it has all the details on it. 
And my dear friend, Marcus Statz, um, has created this event and I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to be able to attend when I come back if, if it goes well and there are more, and I think there will be. Um, so continuing one eye in and one eye out. So you're getting the information, it's landing, but you're also really in your body. You're feeling your body. This is pretty challenging for most people, myself included. Um, so just seeing how we're used to either having our attention outwards or inwards. Most of us, many of us, especially, I, I really feel that. So this is just a practice of, I feel my feet, I hear some words, I feel my feet, I feel my body. So this Sunday, March 26th at 10.30 a.m., there will be the first big ecstatic dance gathering in Madison. And ecstatic dance is not how we usually think of dance. It's not prescribed movements. It's not dancing in a way so that you look beautiful or you look good. It's moving the body or keeping the body still to music so that you can drop into your body more fully so that you can become more embodied it's essentially a moving meditation with yourself. Sometimes at these dances, people do dance with each other, um, but most of the time not. When I do ecstatic dance, mostly I'm inwardly focused. So the gathering will bring together dance, movement, and I, I really actually prefer to call it movement because it's 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 not like dance how we think of it usually. There will be meditation and there will be tea in a formal tea ceremony type setting in a large, beautiful communal space. The tea will be before, during, and after the dance. There will be an opening meditation at 10:30 a.m. and then there will be DJ John Stewart, professional ecstatic dance DJ with 25 years of experience, followed by a one hour set from Mark Statz, who has pr produced his own music. And it's he has made this music specifically for moving meditation. So um, after the dance, there, there, after the music concludes, there will be a, a grounding meditation and a community time to mingle and meet people and share space if you'd like to stay for that. Um, the entry fee is $10 to $30, depending on your desired level of contribution. And it will be at the Goodman Community Center this Sunday at the Brassworks building from 1030 to one. And Lisa has already done me a favor and in the chat included the um, she included, it looks like, Lisa, if you could include the, the whole text that I sent to you before, the Facebook link, and then the Ticket Leap link as well, if you could just put that in the chat. And then it'll be in there. Um, I assume it'll stay in there for the end of the meditation when and if anybody wants to copy it and um, put it into your browser if you're interested in going to that. Beautiful. So sitting or standing, I'm just going to move to sitting because my feet are hurting and continuing to move your body however it wants to move. Tuning in, listening to whether you can tune in more easily with eyes closed or eyes open. And does it feel good to look at the screen or does it feel good to look at something in your environment or eyes closed. And starting to also become more and more aware of your breath as you move.
And if you're at work, in an office, at a desk, you can certainly, if you desire to move, it can be very subtle. It could just be shifting your weight under your desk from one foot to the next. It'd be stretching with arms above your head. And then coming to a place where you're comfortable. So that might be sitting in a chair, might be sitting on the ground or the cushion. It might be lying down, it might be standing. All of the body positions are welcome. And the most important thing, as I've said many times before, is that you are at ease and comfortable. So find your position of greatest ease, greatest comfort, and begin by taking some deep breaths down into the belly. So when you breathe in, the belly is going to push out, belly button will come out in front of you. And if you're noticing that your body is doing it kind of the opposite of that, like for instance, if when you breathe in, your belly sucks in like this, and then when you breathe out, it goes out, it, you're, you're breathing the opposite of what your diaphragm wants you to do. And oftentimes when we're anxious or just if we haven't learned diaphragmatic breathing yet, this is the way we're breathing all the time. And it's actually quite significant and important because it can increase anxiety, can increase a sense of um, danger in the body. Um, so it's important to start to learn how to breathe diaphragmatically where you are breathing with the belly and the belly pushes out with the in-breath. If this is tricky and you're not getting it, lay down on your back and feel the belly rising as you breathe in. It's easier to feel that way. And don't get too worried or worked up about it, but just, um, just be aware that the invitation right now is to do some belly breathing. And If you feel called to make a sound on the out breath, could be with closed mouth, more of a hum, could be open mouth, sigh or sound, if that feels good to you. If you're like, no way am I doing that, don't trust your intuition. And noticing if you're holding tension in the jaw and in the mouth, it's a place we very commonly hold tension. So just pausing for a moment, if that's true for you and giving yourself a little bit of a jaw massage. Just doing what feels good. Maybe the sinuses need it. Maybe the temples. You're giving yourself a little face massage if, if you want to. Okay.
And now allowing the breath just to be as it is in this moment, releasing any instructions, noticing if there are goals or ideas you have about meditation and seeing if you can just notice all of that, letting it be as it is and tuning into your breath, just how it is in this moment, releasing the instructions about the belly breathing, Seeing if you can track one complete breath from the tip of your nose, or if you're breathing through your mouth, if you're congested, tracking the breath all the way from the nose down the back of the throat, feeling the expansion of the belly, the expansion of the chest wall, spreading out of the breath and noticing that we tend to breathe mostly in the front. So seeing if you can let your chest expand back and to the sides as well, inviting the breath into all the lung spaces. So just focusing first on the in-breath. And tracking how the breath comes in the nostrils, down the back of the throat, ideally first into the belly, and then it moves upwards into the lungs, spreading out sideways, backways, frontways. Shoulders rise a little bit with the in breath. I'm going to be quiet so that you can track a couple breath cycles of just the in-breath. Just really fine-tune your awareness of the sensations of the in-breath. Beautiful. And now shifting your focus to the out breath. You can still focus on the in breath too, but at least adding your awareness of the exhale. So we breathe in and then there's this point when the lungs and the belly are full of air and there's a little pause. If you really pay attention, there's a pause right after the inhale. So tuning into the pause, And then feeling as the shoulders relax and drop, the lungs deflate, the chest wall softens and moves inward. And then the belly ideally softens and the navel moves backwards towards the spine with the exhale. So again, I'm going to be quiet for a few breaths so that you can tune into the exhale. So really fine tuning your awareness about what the body does already during an exhalation. We're not creating something, we're just tuning into what is your body already doing anyway, every time it breathes out.
and linking the two together and noticing a full inhalation, the pause at the top of the inhale, full exhalation, and then noticing how there's a natural pause before the next breath, before the next inhale. Tuning in to the simplicity of one complete breath cycle. And now linking together two breaths, seeing if you can keep your concentration and focus on two breath cycles. And that doesn't mean you're not gonna have thoughts, not gonna have other awarenesses, but the breath is there. The sensations of breath are right there, right there in your awareness. Then link together three breaths. Three breaths, seeing if you can maintain your focus and awareness for three consecutive breaths. And if the mind wanders and you lose track of the breath, just come back. Just come back to the sensations. So staying attuned to the sensations of breathing. Now begin to notice how in the exhale, there's this natural downward movement. There's a softening of the body that is already happening. If you're super tense or super stressed, you might not feel it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tune into it and even exaggerate it by really allowing the body to soften, inviting the face especially, the mouth, the jaw to drop with each exhale. Shoulders softening, face melting, pelvis softening, belly softening. And then expanding your awareness outwards from the breath to include the body. So you're focused right now. The invitation is to focus solely on body sensations. Could be the movement of the breath. Could be fluttering in your stomach. Could be tenseness in your shoulders. Whatever it is that is arising, however the body is talking to you today, see if you can let your awareness rest on the body sensation as long as it's alive, as long as it's present. 
and notice if there's a desire to shut it down or to clamp down or judge or turn away and notice that, notice that resistance if it's there. Allow for the resistance, allow for the desire to push something away, very natural. And then see if you can actually make a conscious effort to allow, to just lean in to what's here in the body today already. Allowing the body to be as it is. And many times in order to do this, we need some supportive tools. And I find that breathing into a body part, if it's tense or tight or if there's discomfort, breathing in, imagining literally the breath traveling to that part of your body and giving it space, giving it room to just let whatever's there be as it is. Because the magic of awareness is that as we turn towards something, that's often what the body, mind, emotional body, mm -hmm. it's often what is called for is simply the turning towards most of us, myself at least, I can speak for, I'm often in the habit of when discomfort arises, there might be an initial instinct to turn away or wall off or distract. And then we're kind of controlled by things, right? We're, we're reacting all the time, trying to make ourselves um, not have to feel things. So the magic happens when we recognize that actually turning towards and allowing the body sensation or the emotion in the body to be as it is, it will then transform naturally on its own. And the tricky part is, is that if we try to push something away or force it away, we're stuck with it. That's my experience anyways. So the forcing or the pushing or the controlling, it results in the thing not being able to move, whatever it is, emotions, thoughts, body sensations, perspectives. So the invitation today is to really see if you can even more than before, welcome yourself exactly as you are. And first we're welcoming the body. So be quiet for several minutes so we can practice together in this way. Practice feeling the body. And if you need the support of the breath, Imagine the breath going to that part of the body. If you need the support of your own touch, placing a hand or two hands on the heart, maybe there's heartache or on the face, if there's nurturing or comfort needed or the belly or the throat or the shoulders. The body, as you learn to listen to it, will tell you where it wants to be touched. It's a little tricky at first, learning to listen. But over time, you'll notice, and oftentimes it's where we're having pain or discomfort or tension. Touch can be magic, you know, and we often think we need others touch, and we do for sure. But it's kind of amazing what our own touch can actually do for the body. All right. Dropping in, feeling your body as it is, using touch and breath to support the body, to support yourself in being with whatever is here already.
Expanding your awareness once more to include emotions in the body. So emotions are simply names we've given to body sensations. There may be a sense of sadness, but not having the awareness of where it is in the body, and that's totally fine. So seeing it, seeing this as an opportunity to welcome what's here in the emotional body. And again, using hands and breath to comfort yourself, to nurture yourself, to be able to breathe with and stay with emotions. I've been working through or feeling through a tremendous amount of grief and heartache lately. And one thing I've found to be really useful when my heart is literally aching or feeling like it's breaking even, I'll put one or two fingers where I feel my energetic heart center. So if you're having grief or sadness or heartache, I invite you to try that. Just put one or two fingers and I find myself sort of making a little circular motion. It, for me, with my body, it ends up um, being my pointer finger and my middle finger, or just my middle finger sometimes. It's right on the breastbone. Just feeling, it's almost like you're giving your heart a little massage. And one other way that I comfort myself when I'm feeling a wave of grief is I will just inwardly or outwardly say to myself, I love you. I'm listening. I'm listening to my body. I'm listening to my emotions. Because really, that's what the emotions, the body, the younger parts, whatever we want to call it, that's what they're wanting. That's what they were wanting when we were young, we we're children. And that's what they're wanting now. And the habit for so many of us for so long has been to wall off, to want to be happy all the time, you know, and to just shut out the more difficult emotions. So maybe there is simply happiness and ease in your life right now and then feel that feel whatever's here we don't have to conjure up difficulty but if there is difficulty here realizing that we can't just meet it we can't meet it with harshness we can't meet it with a controlling or judging attitude because it just is too hard it's too painful it doesn't work so seeing what your body needs in terms of support for whatever you're feeling today, and then listening to that and answering that call from the body, maybe putting your fingers on your heart, giving it a little massage.
And then allowing the mind, just like we allowed the body and the emotions, allowing the mind to be as it is today. <laughs> this is a tricky one, especially when it comes to meditation. Most of us have been taught that we need to control and limit the mind. And I tried that for a really long time and I have a very busy mind. And for me at least, that didn't work. The more I tried to contain my mind, the wilder it got. So the way that I work with my mind is to notice it. Ah, okay. The mind, you're fearful today. Okay, sweetheart. I love you, I'm listening. So we can say, I love you, I'm listening to the heart when it's aching or the body when it hurts. And we can also say it to the mind when it's coming up with challenging thoughts or ruminations or worries or fear or rage. I love you, I'm listening. And the mind also can get very um, insistent that something needs to be done. In my experience is the more insistent the mind, usually the less important it actually is. So it's not about doing everything that the mind says we need to do. Sometimes it's important, but it's about seeing what's underneath the thoughts, what's underneath the fear and the ruminations and the projections dropping into the body. So a line I'll use with myself many, many times throughout every day is drop the story, feel the body. The mind is often spinning because there's something in the body or the emotional body that the mind gets scared of and starts to run and tries to fix. So if your mind is running, it may just simply be a fear response, the mind thinking it can protect itself. And ultimately, there is probably not imminent danger like in this very moment. And so you can drop into the body, feel the sensations of what's going on inside you, touch your heart if you need to, or any part that you need. Breathe into the thoughts, breathe into the way it is right now, however that may be, and see if you can just allow yourself to show up exactly as you are with a busy mind or a calm mind, with a whole ball of emotions, or numbness or neutrality with a lot of body aches and pains or ease or everything in between all is welcome and it's in this welcoming of ourselves exactly as we are in the moment that we get to actually drop into just right now and that's where the gold is that's where you get to just be with all of the messiness that is being human. So just for a couple more minutes now, actually one more minute, allowing yourself just to be, releasing all the directions and just being.
And I would invite you, if you're able to make sound in the space that you're in, I'd invite you to join me in three alms to complete our meditation, knowing that with each alms that we feel the vibration in our own bodies, that we are waking up to our own sound, to our own frequency, to the truth and essence of who you really are. That is your sound. That is your vibration. And you can feel yourself by just feeling the movement, the energy wave that moves through when you own. And it's sending that out into the universe, your truth, your essence, your goodness. So whenever you're ready, breathing out completely. Breathing in. the fruits of our practice today spread outwards in all directions and help to end the suffering of all beings everywhere, including our own. Bow to each one of you. Thank you for showing up for yourself and in this way, helping to transform everything by being present to how things are for you and learning little by little to have more and more love, more and more compassion for yourself, which will then spread outwards to all beings. Deep gratitude. Mm.